it's hard to say where the the movement started. There was a lot of us who've been feeling this way for a long time, like yourself, feeling like all the information's in front of us. Like we know the last forests are being lost and it's spoken about but never acted on. And it was just building as over the last winter we've kind of seen, I personally have seen some of the worst clear cuts I've ever seen happen last winter. And by worst I mean just the most beautiful forest lost. And um, going out there, even if you're with someone, you feel really lonely. You feel like, like nobody's watching this happen and nobody's doing anything about it. And, it, and you feel so just completely powerless to be aware of something that's so devastating and, and you feel in a really like emotional way and to have no voice. And so that was the start. There were just a few of us who that had been building inside of us. And when we realized that Ferry Creek was about to be breached by a road in the upper watershed, it was kind of like the energy that had been dormant all kind of like connected right here. And it, it was a, such a quick turnaround. We realized the road was being built. Uh, we got drone footage of it. And we came in all within a week. It was like, it was like boom, boom, boom. And, and when I had been out with other people, it had felt like maybe this movement would just be like two people standing on a road who really cared and just didn't want to see it happen. And then all of a sudden there was like, 20 people right away for the first night and wow. it definitely helped with that feeling of powerless and loneliness to see people stand up and and then all of a sudden the machinery turned around and and now there's been hundreds of people out here and yeah it's not going to happen anymore that logging company are going to do this and we're going to be aware of it and we're going to care and we're not going to act. I think that's over. I honestly do. I think what's relevant now is that because we acted so fast, we didn't do a good job of, of protocol around notifying the Pachita. And that's one of the regrets of the movement, is that we, we rushed in, we came together quickly, and the road was literally breaching the ridge. If we hadn't been there, but like one day later, they would have been in the Ferry Creek watershed, affecting it, um, and logging those ancient yellow cedars that are up there. So we really had to, we felt like, in order for there to be any discourse, it had to be, there had to be action. But now, um, it's a month later and we're seeing the backlash of that um, of not following protocol and and it's a hard thing to reconcile because it's a very complex issue and and it's it is a, a movement that's predominantly a settler environment um, and I think I think there was just a, there was a really pivotal point for all of us where we came in here with kind of a settler agenda to protect the forest. And we reached out to the Bachidat who never spoke back, but um, the first weekend, Bill Jones came up, who's an elder from the Bachidat. And, and he's come up many times since. And he's, he's sat there and, and he's delivered a lot of wisdom, but what he said directly to all of us is, do not leave. Don't leave this ground hold it and in no uncertain terms and so this this chaos around feeling like we've taken the wrong steps with the indigenous communities um, I think would 
would end this movement uh, if it wasn't for for Bill Jones's resolve. And I think I personally would have a hard time being here without that. But at this point, it feels like we are following Bill's guidance. And that's where it, what's developed over the month. And it's so much more powerful to hear Bill talk about this being a place where his uncles came on, on uh, a, a spiritual place for his, for his ancestors and where his uncles would come and they'd fish down low and they'd come visit this place and, and go on journeys up the watershed. But you know, don't hear that part from me, hear it from Bill. But uh, it's really brought, brought um, a lot of conviction to the movement that this is not just another place that we're fighting for. It's actually a really special place to him. And he's doing everything he can and we're doing everything we can alongside him and on his behalf. So, yeah. So what's the current situation? There was a lot of online dialogue that kind of was bringing things to the surface? Yeah, and it's, it's, um, it's definitely a, it's a funny thing to be out here in the woods and this disconnect of feeling like this amazing, beautiful community is being formed and like people are excited and, and impassioned and, and I've met so many people who, who like I'm close to now. It feels like home up here to me and, um, and then contrast it against the divisiveness of what's happening back home and and um, groups are forming and dividing very quickly. And I think we're all having a hard time reconciling that and bringing it back together because there, there's some, some people who are hurt on both sides. And I can't really speak to it right, but I think that there's a lot of people who want to feel a connection to this place maybe if I was going to say something and and I can't help but feel it you know I can, I think we all can't help but feel it but feel some connection to this place and it's hard to pair that with the realization that the people who are originally connected to this place we've told can't be connected to this place. We've removed from this place. And, and it's, it's, a, it's just a, a confusing thing to potentially be speaking over those voices again um, is really upsetting. But also, um, it feels right to follow my own connection here. And and so I hope that I hope that some understanding can be met and I hope that there's a way that the people who feel like things have been done done wrong can can come and give us that feedback and we can act on it and things can be reconciled. I really hope that. And I, I think it's happening. 